my computer. Okay, so hi everyone. So we're uh, doing uh, two point, uh, sorry, 3.1 linear models. Uh, I'll jump right into it. And we're doing uh, linear models. Uh, there's a few that we're gonna cover uh, in depth here. And uh, we'll go from there. So <clears throat> let's talk about um, what we're gonna do here. So our goal is to solve some of these uh, most important uh, first order linear models. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Um, and the ones that we're going to go over, we covered a little bit when we did 1.3, when we just did some terminology and stuff like that. Uh, but basically the main ones we want to do today are uh, this one and this one, exponential growth and decay and Newton's law of heating and cooling. Now on the homework, I asked you to do a couple more as well. So I want to say that uh, the skills that we're going to learn today is not only to learn about these, you know, we want to make sure we do those, but also make sure that we know how to uh, convert word problems into DE models and solve. So uh, don't freak out if you see on the homework there are some other types of problems that we don't cover. Uh, that's by uh, I plan that, okay? <clears throat> and I have some, some words here to help you uh, as you go over these notes later on. But again, we want to make sure that uh, it's more important to have the skills and the confidence to be able to look at real world problems and convert them into a different equation and using you know, some of the techniques that we learned how to solve. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. <clears throat> and remember, uh, I can't really see uh, everyone. So if you do have a question, just unmute your mic uh, and I uh, will uh, answer it as we go. Um, <clears throat> so let's uh, continue. Uh, so let's talk about our first model, the exponential growth or decay model. We talked about this back in section 1.3. Again, what it says is that the growth rate of a population is proportional to the current population. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, we convert that into the math, dp dt is equal to kp. Remember k here is the uh, constant of proportionality. If it's positive, if k is positive, then it's a growth constant. And if it's negative, um, then it's a decay constant. <clears throat> it's a, uh, getting smaller. Remember, we always can have some initial condition. This is what makes it an, an IVP. Um, you know, we might know what P naught is in a specific problem, or we might not. We might just know it's just some generic P naught. Uh, let's learn how to solve it real quick. So uh, we have dP dt is equal to uh, kp like that. Um, Maybe in the chat, if you guys like, uh, go into the chat and uh, tell me what type of uh, um, differential equation is that? You know, wh what technique are we going to be able to use to solve that? Or you can unmute and uh, let me know. Anybody? Actually, you know, I don't think I can see the chat. This is dumb. Uh, okay, never mind. I cannot see the chat while I'm here. Well, anyways, um, I'm going to have to not do that. It's all a learning process. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> I think when I'm sharing my screen, I can't see the chat button. That's weird. Um, okay, well, anyways, it's uh, separable. So... It's, well, not yet. It's separable because what can I do? I can divide by P over here. So I have one over P. I can multiply by DT. And so then I have this one over P DP is equal to uh, K DT. And so that's separated because I have the P's and DP's on one side and the K's and the, um, uh, there's no T term, but uh, K is a constant. So I can move that over there. And then you can just integrate. So we'll do that integrate that. And what are you left with? Well, over here is just going to be LNP. This is going to be KT. Remember, you move all the constants to one side. Uh, technically, there's two different constants, but we move it to the right side. Uh, and then you just do the um, E thing. Like that. And those cancel. Uh, and you're left with uh, P uh, is equal to. Now, technically, we have this. We have E to the KT uh, times e to the c. Um, I should have probably called this like c1 or something like that. Um, this is just a, a algebra rule why we did that. 
Uh, and why can't we get rid of the absolute value? Well, we can get rid of the absolute value here because population is positive. We can't have a negative population. So we just get rid of that because that's matching the real world, what we're talking about. But we can just rename uh, this as just C. Uh, and then you get the actual solution, which is gonna be P of T is equal to C to the KT. And that's why it's called exponential growth. Uh, we'll plug in our initial conditions. P of zero equals P naught. Uh, and then what do you get? You get P naught is equal to C E to the zero. And so that tells me that C is equal to P naught. And so the final solution to the model is P of T is equal to P naught E to the KT. Okay, and so that's the exponential growth or decay model. The solution. <clears throat> All right. If anyone has any questions, again, just uh, unmute your mic or um, I don't think I can see chat, but uh, <laughs> um, and I hope I'm recording too. I'm a little bit off today. I don't know. I think the fires are just making me go um, batty. So, um, I'm sure some of you are feeling that way too. So <clears throat> let me know if anything's unclear as we go. Um, but if not, then let's just jump into a problem. So let's take a look at this problem here, exponential growth. So um, it says that there's a culture of bacteria. So the initially has P naught. So I know that P of zero is equal to P naught to some unknown amount or just some constant fixed amount. Um, then we have some information at time equals one, the, is that. So if I was making like a table of values, I know that when T and P of T at time zero, I have P naught and at time three, uh, sorry, at time one, I have three halves P naught like that. Okay. <clears throat> And it says that the rate of growth is proportional, yada, yada, yada. So that all that's telling me is that it's uh, the exponential growth uh, model. Um, and then let's ask, let's figure out what the question is actually asking. It's actually asking for determine the time necessary for the number of bacteria to triple. So basically we're needed to find T when P of T will equal, now it says it's gonna triple. So it's gonna be triple of the original amount. The original amount was P naught. So the tripling amount would be three P naught, like that. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first thing is, you know, um, uh, use the model. So I know the solution to this model for exponential growth and decay is right here. It's the P of T, so let's just use that. So let's take a look. So, uh, use black. So I know this is the model P of T is equal to P naught E to the KT. Now we have this uh, unknown growth rate. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out what is K, figure out what K is. Okay, to do that, we can just plug in um, uh, the the amount that was given to us, plug in one comma three halves P naught. Okay, so let's do that. So we have three halves P naught is equal to P naught E to the K uh, times one. And that's cool because uh, stuff cancels out and we have P naught canceling out with P naught. Uh, and then we have, uh, three halves is equaling to e to the k, which you just do the algebra there. You then just take ln on both sides. Um, and that tells you that k is equal to ln three halves. Okay. <clears throat> um, roughly that is 0 0.4054. Or 0.4055. Okay. So now that we know that, we can then go to the second part of the problem, which is 
um, let's actually figure out, um, you know, when is it, when is P of T equal to three P naught? So find T when P of T equals three P naught. Like that, you just plug it into the formula. So three P naught is equal to, again, this is, this is our model. So I'm just gonna plunk it down right there. Is gonna equal P naught E to the 0. 0.4055 T like that. Those cancel and you're left with three is equal to E to the 0. 0.4055 T. And then you just do natural log. Okay, and that tells you that ln3 is equal to 0. 0.4055t. And then last step is you just divide by that. I'm sorry, I ran out of room here, really bad. But if you do that, then you find out that t is equal to roughly, um, uh, I did it earlier. T roughly equals 2.71 hours. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's take a pause for the cause. Um, are there any, um, um, as you look at that, are there any, was there any steps that are unclear or anything like that? Anything at all? Ah, there's Jeff. Okay. <clears throat> um, if you're all good, you can just say so in the chat. I found I figured out where the chat uh, screen was. So um, <clears throat> if you want to give me any feedback or anything, just let me know. Um, anything, if anything was unclear or uh, if it's all good, you can say all good as well. <clears throat> Um, okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I've said this before, but, um, <laughs> Cole with the pointing arrow. Good. I think I told you all before it's, this, uh, this is hard for me, uh, too. Um, I'm sure it's hard for you all too, as well, doing it online. So, uh, I value feedback, uh, while I'm going. So anytime you want to just, uh, say something or write in the chat or um, like Lena just did with the thumbs up, that'd be really great. But um, it's all good, thank you, thanks Harry. Okay, so um, real quick though, a sanity check. Um, so this is called exponential growth. Uh, it looks great and it kind of answers it, but it only works in the short term because uh, it's really bad uh, um, as time goes on. As time goes on to infinity, this thing has exponential growth and it grows without bound. So it's not the best model. And in fact, in 3.2, we're gonna learn a better model that uh, doesn't have this, it, it looks exponential at the beginning, but then it kind of cools off uh, and it has a horizontal asymptote. So uh, this is a small piece of the graph, but um, if you look at the larger piece of the graph, it just goes off to infinity, which is impossible. You know, you can't have uh, growth going on to infinity because there's hopefully no world where bacteria in a Petri dish would grow to infinity. <clears throat> But uh, it's good for the first few rounds, uh, first few generations of the growth. All right, well, let's move on then. Uh, next one is radioactive decay and half-life. Now, the cool thing is, is that the same model uh, works for radioactive decay and half-life. So it's the exact same model. Um, it might just use different notation, but it's the same thing. It turns out that it's proportional to the growth uh, at the time. Uh, so the DE is exactly the same. D, D, A, D, T is equal to K times A. You have some initial amount. Okay, and the solution will be exactly the same too. You know, um, A of T is equal to A naught E to the K T. That's really cool. So it's cool that uh, one math model uh, works for many things out in the real world, which is nice. <clears throat> Um, I wrote in here some stuff for you about what radioactive decay is and half-life. You can read that on your own, but basically some, some, uh, 
substances out there uh, are unstable and they want to decay to a more stable isotope or um, a version of the element or to different elements actually. Um, and um, we've all heard of that, you know, the Half-Life, uh, it's a really cool video game too. But Half-Life uh, basically just means how long is it gonna take if you just leave a, uh, a slab of the radioactive material alone, uh, how long will it take for half of it to go away? Uh, because half of it's going to decay. Um, and different substances have different um, amounts, uh, different timelines, okay? Radium is pretty radioactive, and look, it takes 1,700 years to, um, to uh, uh, go half of its life, uh, relatively short in the scheme of things. So look at uranium. Uranium is pretty stable, 4.5 billion years of uranium-238. Uh, and carbon-12 is uh, relatively reactive, and it has a half-life of 5,730 years. By the way, the symbol for half-life, uh, symbol, uh, is tau. Uh, so that's the Greek tau. Tau, or T. That's their T in their alphabet. Um, <clears throat> Let's jump to a problem. It's probably the easiest way to take a look. So let's take a look. A breeder reactor, which is a, a nuclear reactor, uh, converts relatively stable uranium-238 into isotope plutonium-239 uh, um, for many reasons we want to do that. <clears throat> After 15 years, it is determined that 0.043% of the initial amount, A0. So let's make a table here. So time and amount. So at time zero, we had A0. Uh, and at time 15 years, that's our scale here. Um, it says that there is this much has disintegrated. So kind of tricky there. But what that means is that there is 100% uh, minus 0.043% uh, amount left, which um, you want to make sure that you... Uh, <laughs> Uh, do that right. That's going to give me 99.957%. Uh, left. Now that's a percent. So we just move the decimal twice over. And after 15 years, we have 0.99957A0. So that's how much we have um, after 15 uh, years if I did that right, which I hope I did. <laughs> um, okay, so again, what are we going to do? Well, just like we did with the previous problem is use the model uh, and find k. So, uh, man, I'm running out of room here. So, um, I'm going to try to fit this in here. So here's the model. I know it's that, the solution. So uh, A of T is equal to A naught E to the KT. Uh, let's use 15 comma 0.99957 A naught. Uh, and what do we get? We get 0.99957 A naught is equal to a naught e to the k times 15. Okay, you can see the a naughts cancel. It doesn't really matter how much we had left at the beginning uh, <clears throat> because it's all relative to what we had at the beginning. Uh, and then we get um, 0.99957 is equal to e to the 15k. And then you just do ln on both sides. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Uh, then, so you have ln of 0.999957 is equal to 15K. And then last step is you divide by 15. And so K, uh, it's roughly equal to that. I think I found the uh, decimal, just a second. It's uh, roughly equal to negative point uh, zero, 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 just make sure I get it right. Four zeros, uh, two, eight, six, seven. 
<clears throat> okay. Uh, so that's the first step. You find K. On all these models, you have to find K uh, first. But then let's uh, use, uh, you know, um, uh, the model to find half-life. Find tau. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so what does half-life mean? Well, half-life means that find the time such that we get one half p naught. So plug that in. So plug in and find time. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. So we have uh, one half uh, p naught because again, half life is saying there's half of the stuff there. Half half of the p naught has to equal the original p naught times e to the negative point zero 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 zero. Two eight six seven t, and then we'll just do algebra to figure out what the what the time is. So the p knots cancel, and then you're going to get one half is equal to e to the negative point zero 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 two eight six seven t, and then you just take ln on both sides, like that. And so you get ln one half is equal to e to the negative point zero 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 uh, two eight six seven t. <clears throat> oh no, I messed that up. Sorry. Just this. We took ln uh, negative ah right. Negative point zero 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 two eight six seven t. Okay, and the last thing is just divide by that zero. Zero zero uh two eight six seven. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so anyways, I did that earlier to save time. Uh, and I find out that T, which is like tau here, uh, roughly equals 24,180 years. So over here, if I was filling it out, it took 24,180 years for there to be one half of the initial amount like that. So tau on this problem was 24,180 years. And I rounded a little bit, just FYI, just because I wanted to. <clears throat> okay. Um, hopefully some of you are seeing that uh, we could probably come up with a formula for what tau is because it doesn't matter what the initial amount is. Every time I plug in T and one half P naught, the key thing here is this calculation right here. Try to do it purple. This is gonna give me the answer for tau every time. It's always gonna be L in half and it's gonna be divided by K. So we can actually write that down as a formula. Um, Half-life on any uh, radioactive material, tau is gonna be uh, LN one half divided by K. I'll put stars there. So that's really cool. Oops, it's a bad star. Okay. Uh, and vice versa, by the way, uh, if you did algebra on that, you could also tell that K is equal to um, LN one half divided by tau. I'm sorry, it's really bad, but you can do the algebra there and <clears throat> solve for both. So that's pretty cool that we, in the middle of the problem, we were able to figure out that every time tau is equal to ln one half divided by k or vice versa, uh, k is equal to ln one half divided by tau. That's gonna save us a lot of time uh, on other problems, which is nice. <clears throat> okay, uh, let me check, let me ask again, uh, are there any questions uh, in the chat? Let me pull up the chat here, take a pause for the cause. 
<clears throat> or you could uh, give me thumbs up or emojis if you have any questions or anything like that. Okay, Leo says good. All right, and Zoheb is giving me a clap. Wow, thanks so so much, Zoheb. Uh, let me uh, let me move the screen and let me. Um, okay, so this is going to test your note taking skills. Uh, or tell me what uh, what's the formula for tau for for half life. Go ahead and write that in. Um, hopefully, I'm hiding the screen well. Write that in the chat. So what what did we just figure out was no matter what, the uh, tau was always equal to something. <clears throat> what what is that? Write that in the chat. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Very good. Ooh, Harry using 0.5. Okay. <clears throat> Fancy. All right, yes, very good. Uh, online, you might see sometimes uh, a lot of books, especially chemistry books, they actually use negative ln2 on top. Uh, mathematically, that's the, same, that's the same number as ln half. I don't know why they use negative ln2. I think it's because k is negative and they want the negatives to cancel out, but who cares? Uh, to me, it makes more sense to say ln half because you're thinking of half-life, you know, <clears throat> so ln of half uh, makes sense. Okay, cool. Very good. Awesome. So, um, one really cool application of uh, uh, of half life and radioactive decay is uh, carbon dating. So I'm sure you've all heard, uh, you know, like even on Jurassic Park, you know, they say they have some fossil and they see that it, they they estimate that it's you know a fifteen thousand year old piece of petrified wood or something like that <clears throat> uh, or whatever. Um, this is a relatively new ability of humans to be able to do that. Uh, it only happened about 70 years ago, uh, which in scientific terms is pretty recent. So I'll let you read this uh, on your own. Uh, I just uh, took this from the book, but it's pretty cool. It gives an explanation about carbon dating and how it works. It does rely on some assumptions. It relies on some assumptions that carbon-14 um, uh, has a certain amount of common um, production uh, due to um, as you can kind of see here, some uh, cosmic radiation. Uh, you know, so it's obviously an assumption. As math people, we kind of we kind of cringe and say, "Well, we hope that that works." You know, physicists they'll they'll be fine with it, but it's not a theorem or anything. So when we're looking at a piece of fossil, we're not saying with one hundred percent certainty that it's that uh, age range, but it's a it's a, it's the best that we have right now. Um, <clears throat> and uh, just another uh, caveat. This is really accurate. Uh, even scientists will admit this is really accurate for you know up to six, seven, eight thousand years ago. But after that, uh, it kind of breaks down a little bit, uh, and their answers are not as helpful. They have to use more advanced techniques, I think, uh, to go longer than the more recent past. Um, some of that has to do with the chemistry and physics. Some of that has to do has to do with the math, because as we said, exponential growth is or decay is very accurate in the little beginning, but um, um, it can get uh, wonky when you have uh, long time uh, intervals. <clears throat> but anyways, I'll let you read that. Um, and um, the key thing here is that the commonly accepted value of half-life of carbon-14, this is the most commonly used uh, radiometric carbon dating. You've heard carbon dating. They use carbon-14. Uh, and it has a commonly accepted value of approximately 5,730. I'm sure they have it more accurate to the more decimal place. But for us, that's good enough that we're going to use. So carbon-14, it's tau, uh, uh, um, tau uh, equals uh, 5730 years. So that's important. So let's talk, let's use that to figure out uh, the age of a fossil. So here in this example, it says they found a bone that's found to contain 0.1% of its original uh, amount of carbon-14, RC-14. Determine the age of the fossil. <clears throat> okay. So again, uh, we use uh, the model to start with. So always start with the model. So a of t is equal to a naught e to the kt. We can actually let's use um, let's use that formula. K was equal to ln one half divided by tau, uh, and find k. That's gonna be a lot easier than um, using um, some other info. 
uh, we can use both, it doesn't really matter, but let's do that. So let's plug it in. So K is gonna equal LN one half divided by tau, tau was 5,730. Like that. <clears throat> and, and that roughly equals, oh, sorry, let me do purple. Um, let's see, I did it earlier. Where is it? Negative point zero zero uh, zero one two oh nine seven. Okay, so that's helpful because now I know the model here is going to be a of t is equal to a naught e to this thing negative point zero 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 uh, one two zero oh nine seven t. And that's a T. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the fires. <clears throat> All right. Okay, cool. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we always have to find the model first. And then once we have the model, once we have K and all that stuff, then we can answer whatever questions we want. So it wants to determine the age of the fossil. Um, so we uh, know that right now there's 0.1% of its original amount uh, of carbon. So we know we're given that right now, we don't know the time, how old it is, but we do know that there is 0.1% left. Uh, now 0.1% is a decimal, so uh, sorry, is a percent, so we have to convert it to a decimal. So right now we know it's point, move the decimal twice, a naught, and we want to find So let's just plug that into the model here. Uh, let me do a different color. So now we know that we have 0 0.001 a naught is equal to a naught e to the negative 0 .001, uh, 0 0.001 uh, t. We don't know t, but we'll find it. And so then you just divide by a naught. The a naughts don't matter. And you get uh, 0 0.001 is equal to negative, uh, sorry, E um, to the, oh, I messed up, sorry. <clears throat> Let me put that whole thing in. 12097T, uh, sorry. <clears throat> and so we get negative 0 0.00012097T. Uh, and then, like we've done in every single problem, you just take LN on both sides. Um, and then you have, uh, let me do it in blue here. Then you have LN 0 0.001 uh, is equal to um, negative 0 0.00012097 T. And then obviously the last thing you do is you just divide by that. Oops, sorry. Okay, and that tells me I did the calculation earlier. Let's make sure I did it right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, okay. And that tells me that the time, and you can try it in your calculator too to make sure I did it right, but uh, this is what I got, 57,100 uh, years. Okay, so that's the age of the fossil. So the fossil is roughly 57,100 years old. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's take a pause for the cause here. Yeah, we're doing. Oops. Okay. 
Okay. So are we okay on that one? Are there uh, any questions uh, on that one uh, either about the <clears throat> age of a fossil? Everyone good? Okay, Leo, thank you. Anybody else want to let me know if we're doing good, doing okay? All right, I'll let you call. Thank you. <clears throat> Very good. Um, Connor, thank you, Marcus. Uh, this uh, might help you give context a little bit. Uh, thanks, Edward. Uh, if you've ever seen when they talk about age of fossils, they think, oh, this thing could be between, <laughs> uh, if it's a really old fossil, they'll say like, like especially about rocks, they'll say like, oh, this is between uh, 250 million and 500 million years old. Well, it's like, gee, thanks. You know, that's uh, so accurate. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so when you're using carbon dating, uh, I think they use different elements for really old stuff, uh, not carbon date. Uh, they wouldn't use carbon-14. But when you get really old, uh, the range, the error range gets huge, again, because there is very sensitive to the amounts of uh, the radioactive material. It amounts to measurements, there's errors when you take the measurement, when you do this, you do that, uh, stuff like that. So uh, the longer you go, the more uh, inaccurate you'll get. Uh, so that's why you'll see on rocks, they'll say this rock is between, you know, 1.1 billion and 2.3 billion years old. It's like, well, I wish on my homework I could be off by a billion, you know, and still be okay. But that's the best that we can do with some of this uh, fossil or some of this dating of uh, things that are really, really old. <clears throat> still pretty cool, though, right, that we can uh, even be able to do this uh, just by measuring how much we have in the material in the fossil right now. So it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to interested in doing that, you do that in especially geology, uh, archaeology as well, but uh, some um, chemistry as well. But it's a, a mixture of chemistry and physics that you have to do for that. But as you can see, the math is not too bad. The math is pretty easy. Okay, well, uh, let's jump uh, uh, over to the last model that we'll cover today, which is uh, Newton's uh, law of heating and cooling. <clears throat> So we've, uh, we've discussed this before. Um, it's the same model, uh, just depends on what K is. If K is positive or negative, uh, if it will be heating or cooling. Um, and uh, what's cool is that it is the same model, which is nice. Um, if it's cooling, K is negative. So this will say K is negative. And if it's heating, uh, K will be positive. Um, this is what it says in words. It says the rate of change in object's temperature is proportional to the difference between the ob object temperature and the ambient temperature of the surrounding medium. Uh, in math, this is what we came up with back in 1.3. Oh, this is a typo. This should say zero. I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's the initial condition. My bad. That's a typo. <clears throat> um, just remember that T little m is it's a constant number. It's going to be different for each problem, but it's constant. It's not variable. Uh, and it's temperature of the surrounding medium. That's what the T little m means. A lot of places use T A for temperature of the ambient uh, uh, medium, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then T naught is the initial. Uh, we always use little little zero. Okay, and that's just some some amount. You know, uh, if it's a like a dead body, you know, it might be like ninety nine degrees or ninety eight point six. You know, and they measure backwards uh, after that to see uh, when the person died. This is the this is actually the model they use, by the way, for CSI and stuff like that. When they say, uh, <clears throat> "Oh, the body died. Uh, this person died." You know, at so and so time. All they need to do is take two temperature readings, and then they're they're good. Um, Really quickly, the solution, we came up with this a little bit uh, earlier. Um, let me write it over here and then let's actually try to derive it real quick. So the solution is this T of T is equal to uh, TM plus T naught minus TM e to the KT. Um, do I have time to solve it? Well, how do you solve it? Maybe I'll just start uh, solve it. How, how would you come up with that? How to come up with that? Uh, well, let's look over here at the at this. Um, this is actually separable. So if you divide by this term, divide by t minus tm on both sides, uh, you multiply by dt on both sides. 
just to save room. This is what you get. Uh, let's do it in green. So then you get uh, dt over t minus tm is equal to k times dt. Uh, and then you just integrate that. So that's actually separable. Uh, kind of weird to think about, but that is separable. Uh, this tm is just a constant, this minus tm. So it's really just like the variable here is the, the big T. Uh, and then you just integrate. And what do you get? Well, you get ln absolute value of t minus tm uh, is equal to uh, kt plus c. Uh, let me just call it c1 for right now. We'll, we'll move it over in a second <clears throat> to e stuff. So then we do the E stuff, which we do on every single one of these problems. Uh, and then you get uh, T minus TM uh, is equal to, I'm just gonna call it C E to the KT. Um, again, uh, I'm kind of skipping steps here, but we know that this actually separates into E to the C1 times E to the KT. And so I'm just renaming this E to the C1, uh, just rename as C, <clears throat> big C. Okay, and then you just do the algebra, you move the TM over, so add TM, add TM, uh, and you're left with big T, oops, I'm doing green. Uh, T is equal to um, TM plus C E to the KT. Then you just plug in your initial conditions, plug in T of zero is equal to T naught, and you do the math, uh, and it turns out that C is gonna equal uh, T naught minus TM. And that, my friends, is why we get uh, this really cool solution to that IVP. <clears throat> uh, I don't have room for the show of C, but I'm confident that you all can do that as well. <clears throat> so just plug this in right here. <clears throat> so that's really cool. Uh, so this is a solution to Newton's law. It doesn't matter if it's heating or cooling. Uh, again, the K will take care of that for you. If it's cooling, the K will be negative. If it's heating, the K will be positive. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump to a problem. So, so I have a cake in an oven and I took the cake out of the oven. Uh, right when I did that, so say at time zero, its temperature is measured at 300 degrees. So um, T and big T at zero, uh, it was 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, three minutes later, I took it out and it turns out, I mean, sorry, it was still out, just resting somewhere in the room <clears throat> like on the countertop. At three minutes, uh, the temperature was 200 degrees. So it decreased quite fast, 100 degrees in three minutes. Um, it wants to know uh, the time when we get to the um, to room temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's identify some stuff here. So I know T naught, uh, that's the initial temperature uh, and that was given to us as 300. So I know T naught is 300. I know the temperature of the surrounding room. So the room is 70 degrees. So TM is equal to 70, like that. And I don't know what K is, so K, I uh, can't figure it out yet. <clears throat> but just like the problems we did with the half-life and stuff like that, uh, step one, you know, just find K. Um, we need to know what that is. So use the solution right here. So I know big T is equal to TM, which is 70, uh, plus uh, T naught minus TM, so 300 minus 70, e to the KT which is gonna give me T is equal to 70 plus 230 e to the KT. Then let's plug in um, one of the initial conditions. We can't plug in zero because that will uh, make this go away and <clears throat> we won't get anything. But we can plug in um, like three and 200. So let's plug in three comma 200. And so you get 200 is equal to 70 plus 230 e to the three times K. Um, then just do some math, subtract 70. <clears throat> and you get 130 
is equal to 230 e to the 3k uh, divide by 230 um, and you get uh, whatever that is don't care because I'm going to take ln right now so take ln ln and so you get uh, ln of 130 over 230 is equal to 3k uh, and then you just divide by 3 okay <clears throat> Just to save some time, let me move this here. Um, I did it earlier. So um, k is roughly equal to, let's see, uh, negative point zero one nine zero one eight. Okay. And so that tells me over here that my model is t is equal to 70 plus 230 uh, e to the negative 0 0.19018 t. Okay, so that's the end of step one. We needed to figure out what k was. Uh, step two is uh, answer the question was, you know, um, uh, find out when temperature equals 70. So, uh, you know, this is right here. We want to figure that out. So the output is 70 and we put it in and we try to solve for T. So 70 plus 230 E to the negative 0 0.19018 T. Okay. So just do some do some math here. So subtract 70. And we get 0 is equal to 230 e to the negative point uh, 19018t divided by 230. Don't matter on this side. And we get 0 is equal to e to the negative point 19018t. Obviously, we take LN on both sides. Okay, <clears throat> so you guys in the chat, tell me. Um, take a break. <clears throat> so you guys uh, take your calculators out or uh, know your log rules, uh, log properties, um, and uh, or either write in the chat what happens or Give me an emoji uh, reaction that explain that um, shows what you are feeling right now when you try to solve that. What happens? LMAO, yeah. Okay, good call. <laughs> that's that's a pretty accurate one. <clears throat> yeah. Are there any other uh, acronyms or abbreviations that describe uh, what's going to happen there when we try to take LN of zero? Anybody? Cole says, my calculator is calling me stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone else has tried that? Did anything happen or uh, are we confused now? You can say yes if you're confused. Uh, Lena, oh, yeah, <laughs> very good. <clears throat> Um, so did I do math wrong? Answer me that uh, in the chat. Did I, did I do any of my steps wrong or any, any of the math wrong? Okay, Leo and Edward say no, thank you. Um, it's okay, I do math uh, incorrectly sometimes. So if I did uh, and you think I did it wrong, let me know. But um, what does this mean then? So why, uh, why am I not able to solve this? <clears throat> well, let's look back to the model. 
Um, or, well, there's two ways we can look at it. We can look at the model or we can look at the graph. So here I have the graph here for this, for this exact model, this problem. And what happens? Well, this graph here of, of this, this is this function right here. Um, well, what happens? It has a horizontal asymptote. So as you go, let me put that in blue actually. I have a blue pen. So <clears throat> as time goes on, so the limit as t goes to infinity of big T of 70 plus 230 e to the negative t, um, <clears throat> this part goes away. So that goes to zero. Because it has a negative exponent, uh, it's actually getting divided by e. And so as time goes on, e to the big number goes to infinity. And a negative exponent just means it's one over. So I'm doing one or 230 divided by an infinite number, infinitely big number. And so this part just goes to zero. And so as time goes on to infinity, the only term that matters is just 70. And so the limit uh, is just equal to 70. So we have a horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> So that means that theoretically, uh, our cake is actually never ever going to equal 70. It's never going to get there. And we saw that right here. So this here let us know that, man, I can't take ln of zero. So mathematically, uh, this cake theoretically never actually reached room temperature. Um, so uh, <clears throat> that's the math of it, at least. Um, let me ask a question um, in the chat. So the math says that the cake never reaches 70 degrees, but you guys in the chat, uh, you tell me, uh, do you think in real life, in practice, the, the cake actually reaches room temperature, 70 degrees? So just a yes or no. Do you think when you take a cake out of an oven, does it actually reach room temperature? So yes or no? Let's go ahead and write that in the chat. Okay, we have one answer. Everyone start answering the chat. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, good. Connor, Elmer, Kalechi, Zoheb, Evelyn. Excellent. <laughs> Cole says, I hope so. Yeah, Edward, <clears throat> Zoheb. Okay, so Zoheb, you got, if you felt the peer pressure, huh? <laughs> Change your answer. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Uh, it turns out, I mean, it's kind of a, a philosophical question. Physic physicists will say no. Uh, it actually never reaches 70 degrees because uh, what is temperature? It's a measure of your heat energy. And uh, technically there's, you know, um, 6.0 times 10 to the 23 uh, times however many grams you have uh, in there. There's so many molecules in there that the measure of it all could theoretically uh, not actually reach 70 degrees. So it might be 70.0001 degrees or whatever. Uh, in practice, uh, we'll say it goes to 70 degrees. So in real life, you know, if you measure it, it's going to get it's going to get to room temperature. But this is a cool thing. I mean, there's science behind it that actually, you know, the temperature never actually exactly equals 70 degrees, which is uh, pretty cool. <clears throat> and actually, physicists would say that this model is not perfect because um, if I take a cake, a hot cake that's 300 degrees, and I put it in a room that's only 70 degrees, guess what happens? Uh, the cake lowers, but what also happens to the room? Well, I'm taking a hotter object and putting it into a cooler room. According to physics, and, and actually if you measured it with like a heat camera, the room itself would increase. The temperature of the room would increase from 70 degrees to 70.001 degrees or something like that, depending on how large the room is. So that's pretty wild. There's that measurement, uh, sorry, there's that equilibrium where the um, heat uh, dissipates and it has to dissipate somewhere. So if the cake is cooling down, the heat has to go somewhere. And if it's a closed room, it has to go into the room. And so therefore the, heat, the, the room's temperature would have to rise as well. In practice, it's so small, the size is so negligible because the cake is so small in volume compared to a room that it won't really matter. But if you had a heat, heat, heat uh, infrared camera, you'd actually be able to see it. All right. Well, that's it for that. I'm gonna stop recording.